Amen. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Amen. I'm going to be very pastoral today. Amen. Amen. You know, it's an interesting thing when you're on vacation. It's, it's, it's nice to not have the burden to know that you're going to preach the coming Sunday. And Pastor Missouri did a wonderful job last Sunday on prayer. And certainly we need to be praying. Amen. But even in the midst of all that, you know, God is just, he's just kind of hitting me with dings of, you know, where he wants to go and uh, what he needs us. And so that's why I say this message will be very pastoral today. I believe this is a message, amen, that is not just for the saints, but for those who need salvation. And uh, I would... I would admonish you to take this message today, amen, get the link for it or whatever, and send it out, amen, send it out to people, because some people aren't going to come to church, but that doesn't mean they still can't hear the word, and we certainly should take advantage of the technology that we have, we know the devil takes advantage of technology, but what about, amen, us as the believers of Christ, to use technology to get the word out, so amen, I would ask you to do that amen amen this week get this message out go with me to second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three i'm going to read it for you in a common english bible uh, verses one through five uh, a small passage of scripture here that has to do with the last days or what we call the end times in the common english bible reads this way understand that the last days will be dangerous times now, people will be selfish and love money. They will be the kind of people who brag and who are proud. They will slander others, and they will be disobedient to their parents. They will be ungrateful, unholy, unloving, contrary, and critical. Mm. Some of you may look at that and say, gee, that." Sounds like me a little bit. <laughs> they will be without self-control and brutal, and they won't love what is good. They will be people who are disloyal, reckless, and conceited. They will love pleasure instead of loving God. They will look like they are religious, but they deny God's power. Avoid people like this. And the King James, that last verse says, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Our topic today is simply this, end time warnings. End time warnings. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. The scripture is full of End time warnings. Hallelujah. It is amazing that in the book of the Revelation, we get prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ and get to see a lot of coming events that are also what we would call end time events. For Bible scholars out there, that is what is called eschatology. Amen study of the end times. But I believe one of the great reasons that God gives us all this information is so that we're not shaken as his people when we see things coming to pass in the world. There's no doubt that anybody could see right now, if they look at the world, they could see how, amen, the world seems to be going down. Amen. What used to be good is now called evil, and what used to be evil is now called good. We see all these things going on in the world around us, and certainly the world is no longer a safe place. Amen. You, you have to be careful when you go to uh, a crowded place where there's a lot of people because you don't know if someone's going to start shooting somebody up. That's the day we live in now. Amen. You go to a theater, you go to a movie, amen, 
you have to pay attention to who's around you. And you have to pay attention to, amen, where your closest exit might be in case we got to bust out of this place. In fact, even today when we walked into the church on our front row here, I noticed this big backpack sitting there and a big bunch of keys. And I said to my wife, that thing isn't ticking, is it? And she said, I thought the same thing. That says a mindset of the day we're living in today. And certainly, the Apostle Paul here in his writings to Timothy, amen, warns Timothy about what the last days look like and how they will be dangerous times or perilous times, as the King James says. And in this case, he, he gives the signs to look at as it just relates to the attitude of people. Amen. This is one area we don't always look at for it to be an end time sign, but you see here the attitude of people that we just read about, which basically is this, is that people will become more and more selfish about themselves, which means this, that they're really serving themselves as God and not God. They're looking for pleasure and ease and money to make all of that happen. And they are even ungrateful about anything anyone blesses them with. In other words, they feel entitled to everything they get, like they deserve it. Amen. I remember a day in time, we're past that day now, but I remember a day in time when I was coming up. If you felt entitled to anything... Even in the house you lived in, your parents would beat that attitude out of you. Your clothes I bought for you, them shoes I bought for you. You're eating my food, you're sleeping on my bed, you're using my water, you're using my gas electricity. You better get your face to look right. You didn't even have to say anything, just, just have an attitude. And putting it nicely, they would wipe that look off your face. <laughs> but you do that today, might end up in jail. End time warnings are necessary because it helps us to stay focused on the big picture of salvation. So when we talk salvation, we're really talking about salvation from something or salvation really from damnation that can happen if you're not saved. My, my, my. Say, what is pastor talking about damnation? I'm talking about going to hell. I told you I was going to be pastoral today. And this is why this message needs to be preached and it needs to get out because everyone has lost their focus that, amen, when you take your last breath in this world, amen, the greatest event in your life is getting ready to happen, and that is this. Where are you going to spend eternity? Are you going to spend it with God, amen, in heaven, amen, with greater things to come? Or are you headed for the lake of fire, the damnation of God, which is also called hell? Oh, amen. See, I was, come, I was hoping to come to church today to receive a feel-good message. Well, if you're saved today, you should feel good, and it should help you check yourself. Hallelujah. So scriptures help us to stay on track. You see, here, here's the biggest problem is because we live in this world, amen, we have to be careful not to become like this world. The world says to go out and get ease, go out and get wealth, go out and do whatever you got to do. Step on someone to move up the corporate ladder. Do what you have to do. But, but that's not, amen, what God has called us to do as believers because we belong to the kingdom of God. 
But if you're not careful, amen, we, we, we can get, amen, if you will, intoxicated by the systems of this world and become also self-centered. James 4, 4 and 5 in the New King James says it like this. It says, adulterers and adulteresses. In other words, those who are just unfaithful to God. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity? Enmity means friendship with the world is hostility. It's hatred with God. That's deep. He's saying if you are a friend with the world, then that is hatred with God. The world hates God. It's enmity with God. So we got to be careful not to be like the world. It goes on to say, wherefore, therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of this world makes himself an enemy of God. My, my. And so therefore, it's important for us to have moments where we are checking ourselves. Because quite frankly, amen, we have a propensity to be selfish and want what we want. And in the day we live in, and we don't want to wait for it. We want it now. Even to the point if people will take from someone else instead of working for it or waiting for it. Now, first of all, let me say this. God is love. God is also holy. God is also just. And so there, there seems to be in the day we live in now that everyone wants to hear about the love of God, but they don't want to hear about that other side of God. It's not really another side of God. It's just all who God is. God is love. Thank you, Jesus. If he isn't love, we wouldn't have a chance for salvation. But because he loves humanity so much, he paid the price for our sins. If we accept him and repent of our sins, amen, we can get the blood that Jesus shed applied to our lives. His love is also shown to all of humanity by his creative power. Everything you see was created by God, and he created it out of his love. Thank you, Jesus. And his greatest creation is you. It's you and it's me he made us and created us in his image and in his likeness. But God is also holy. And because he is holy, in other words, he don't have holy moments. He's always holy. He is holy. And because he's holy, he cannot and will not tolerate sin or associate with it. There is no sin in God. There is no deception in God. There is no lying in God. Those are attributes of the devil, but not of God. God is holy Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. He's pure. Thank you, Jesus. My God. And that's why sin can't even approach him. Sin approaches God, it burns up. He's that holy. He's that pure. But he's also a God of justice, which means God is just. And this is powerful for us to understand because whenever you have been wronged, you want justice. You want something to be done. The problem with justice sometimes, amen, doesn't mean that it's wrong to want justice. But when justice turns into vengeance, you could get yourself in trouble. But, but just because, amen, you have prayed for God to give you justice, against situations and circumstances and maybe even people and, and you're not hearing from God so you want to handle it yourself, God is saying, hold on, vengeance is mine, I will repay, Romans 12 and 9, amen. In other words, God is saying, my justice 
amen, will be poured out, but it will happen in my time, not yours. Because God is all-knowing. He sees everything. He knows what he knows those and everything that has done you wrong, and he knows the wrong you've done to others. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the gift of repentance. Hallelujah. And so if we're made in his image and likeness, this is why we want justice. We want something to be done. We get that from God. But God says, let me handle it. Because I can handle it in the right way. In other words, I know all the story. And so therefore, my justice, amen, will be handled out correctly. Well, yours may not. Now, the reason I say all that is because you have to have at least that understanding of God in order to understand these end times that we're in. The end times are amazing. We're in them. We're in the birth pangs of it. We know we're in the beginning of the sorrows, amen, which actually happened on the day of Pentecost. It's amazing. Just as soon as the church was born, amen, it started the, the clock, if you will, of the end times being ushered in. It's amazing how the devil has reared its ugly head the most as soon as God established a bride on the earth called the church. Which means the devil hates you. He hates the believer. He hates the saint of God. He hates the bride of Christ. But we don't have to be afraid of the devil because we have power and authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil is afraid of us. Amen. He just has to try and take advantage of what we don't know through deception. There are three major events of the end times, amen, that are yet to happen. And this is also great, amen, warning from Scripture to let us know. He, he doesn't keep his bride in the dark. In other words, he's saying to his church, I'm going to let you know how it's all going to happen, how it's all going to go down. The first major event that is yet to happen is the rapture of the church. Amen. The church, again, being the bride. And I'll talk about that in detail a little bit more here in a minute. The second one is the seven-year tribulation period. And the one after that will be the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ on the earth as king where he takes the devil and throws him into the pit for a thousand years chained up. And then after that is what is called the great white throne judgment of God. Now concerning the rapture, let me go there first. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18 in the New King James Version says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. My God. Thus shall we always be with the Lord. Watch this. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. You see, if you're saved today, you have the comfort of knowing that before everything gets worse in these last days, God is coming for his bride to pull us and snatch us, catch us up, amen, rapture us out of this evil world. You ought to praise God right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we say the worst is yet to come, doesn't mean that you have to live in the worst time this world will ever have. And that's a strong statement because when you think about all the wars and atrocities and things that have happened in this world, amen, since it was uh, brought together, amen, since there's been humanity, amen, none of that is going to compare to that seven-year tribulation period. But if you're saved today, hallelujah, we won't take a part of it. God says, I'm going to pull my bride out. I'm going to snatch you out of here before it all goes down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It also says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now, 
This I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. But I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Here it is. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. When God snatches his church out of here, guess what? We're going to get our heavenly body. We're going to get a new body. We're going to leave this earthly body, amen, to the dust it came from. And God says, I got everything better from you from here. You're going to be with me forever and ever and ever. So, so I want you to notice this. Notice it's a snatching in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. Amen. That's not even a blink of an eye. Just, just when your eyelid just gives a little shake. Amen. We're out of here. The church will disappear from the world. Amen. Now, trust me, the media and the world system already has all that figured out. The UFOs came last night and snatched a bunch of people. You can call me whatever you want. Amen. But we're going to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a front row seat of how he's going to handle things in the tribulation period. Amen. And be, and be part of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. You don't want to miss the rapture. Here's your end time warning, church. Amen. Make sure you're right. Make sure you're without spot or wrinkle or any such things. I know we can't live perfect, but when you are imperfect as it relates to God's holiness, get before God and say, Lord, forgive me and repent and turn back to God. Because if you miss the rapture, the next thing is the tribulation period. My, my. The seven-year tribulation period, which will happen, I believe the clock starts ticking at the rapture. Amen. Is God pouring out his wrath on those in the world who have rejected him and rejected Jesus Christ as their plan of salvation. God unleashes his wrath, though, interesting, in the seven-year period in stages. And he does it, I believe, so that in hopes that people will still repent of their sins. It is amazing when you think about the seven-year tribulation period, you, you see the wrath of God against those who are hard against God and are bent on doing evil or doing their own selfish thing. Amen. But when they see these events start happening around them, you would think that they would come to their senses and realize that God is in control and give their life over to God. And I believe there will be some that do that, but it won't be many. This will also be a time, the seven-year tribulation, where God really disciplines Israel. And he will bring them during this time to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And most of that will happen in the last three and a half years or the second half of the seven-year tribulation period. This is a time where the Antichrist will rise up. The world will think he is a savior. They will think he is a Christ, but he's anti-Christ. Amen. He, he will somehow bring some great peace amongst the world for a very short time. He'll deceive Israel to, to make them think that he is the actual Messiah, but he's only doing it to gain control of the world. And he will demand everyone to take his mark, the mark of the beast. And the Bible says 666 in order to buy or sell. Amen. If you're going to function in society, which is a great test. I, I love the way God knows how to set things up because remember where we just read in Timothy that people will be lovers of their money and their ease and their finances and their houses and their cars and their clothes and all of that. And God said, well, you want to keep all that? You're going to have to follow the beast and take his mark. If you're going to buy or sell, which means if you miss the rapture, amen, and now it comes to your understanding, wait a minute, didn't Pastor G preach about this? I better not take the mark. You better run for your life because he will make those who don't take the mark 
to be executed, which means you're going to give your life to Jesus Christ in that moment to not take the mark. The question is, will you be strong enough to do that? If, if you're not strong enough to come to the Lord now, you're going to be strong enough then? Have you ever had this thought, you know what, I, I know I need to come to God, but you know what, there's still some stuff I need to do, I want to do, I want to experience. The devil will lie to you. You know, I just want to go out and build my testimony a little more. Tomorrow's not promised. And what happens if you have a heart attack right in the midst of your sin? The rapture's already taking place for you, and you'll be before the judgment of God. Ah, so the Antichrist, knowing, feeding off of the fact that people love their stuff, it's not going to be a big deal for, for people to take the mark. They'll gladly take the mark. Amen. We're programmed for it. Amen. It says that the mark will be on their right hand or on their forehead. We, don't, we do that now almost. See people going to the store, click. Click. Man, you, doesn't anybody use cash anymore? Hey, Amen. People don't even break out their card anymore. They just bring it up on their phone. Click. Watch that. Right hand over the scanner. Right hand over the scanner. Say, well, what if someone lost their hand? Yeah, but you can't lose your head, so the mark is on the forehead, too. So we can get our stuff. My, my, my. We don't have time to go through all the judgments of the tribulation period, so I'm going to fire them at you really quick. Except for this very first one. I'm going to spend a little time on it. Amen. The first judgments that God unleashes are called the seal judgments. The very first judgment of the seal judgment says, A white horse, amen, is released, and the rider on it, amen, comes with diplomacy. In other words, amen, the Bible says that he has a bow, but he doesn't have an arrow. But he's able to conquer the world. Amen. That white horse resembles a conqueror, but he doesn't use any weaponry, which means that he will conquer the world through diplomacy. Now, now, most interpretation of this is, is that he will find a way to bring peace in the world. Especially with Israel and the enemies of Israel. This is, this is so amazing when you have this knowledge. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. Amen. When you look at current conditions in the world, you know that in October, Hamas, out of the Gaza Strip, amen, attacked an Israeli town, amen, in an ongoing concert, amen, and killed innocent lives unprovoked. Israel says we must eliminate this terrorist organization called Hamas, and now we're six months into that war. It's important to know that Hamas is backed by, amen, a whole regime and a government that, amen, we call Iran, but the scripture calls it Assyria. Amen. And so there's all kinds, and they found in the tunnels all the stockpiles of weaponry and, and even cash, all types of currency. Amen. Some of our dollars, our men, are there because they're deceptive. They raise money for humanitarian efforts, but it's really going to a terrorist organization. It's why you better be careful where you put your money because you don't know the deception of the devil. And why that was going on as soon as Israel attacked Hamas, amen, in the Gaza Strip, amen. Then you also had from Lebanon, amen, another terrorist group backed by Iran called Hezbollah that started firing missiles into Israel on the north. Israel, who God has their back, amen, has been able to defend themselves in all of this. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now you see the conflict and you see the world, amen. They're concerned about, amen, those Palestinians and civilians being killed innocently, as they say, and all that. And they're causing an uproar, amen, and amen. And Israel is saying, amen, trying to appease the world now by taking care of the civilians. But at the same time, understand that we got to go in and finish and eliminate Hamas so they'll just build up again. The tunnel structure, amen, under the whole Gaza Strip, amen, was much larger and bigger than even is the Israel's thought. It, 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 took, it had to take years and years and years to fund all that, to build all that infrastructure, all for the purpose of trying to exterminate Israel. But last night, unprecedented that the country of Iran actually sent missiles and drones from Iran on a direct attack on Israel's land. And you may be wondering, why is Pastor talking about this? Because these are end time warnings. Now, things are really going to get crazy. Because Israel has already vowed. Israel has wanted to attack Iran for years, but they wouldn't because there's never been an attack from Iran from their soil. They'll use Hezbollah, they'll use Lebanon, they'll use the Gaza Strip, but it's never come directly from the country of Iran. But last night it did. And Israel will retaliate. Regardless of what the United States says, regardless of what any other country says, they are going to attack Iran. And I can understand why in this way, because Iran is very close to, amen, getting or forming a nuclear weapon. And if they are evil as they are, they will use that against Israel and maybe even the United States. In fact, Iran has already said when we get through with Israel, we're coming after the United States. They hate us because we believe in God, the true living God. And so now, wait for it. This happened last night. Amen. But wait for it. And here's what's amazing. Amen. Iran, from what I understand, and, and these numbers could be off, but these are conservative based on the news I was watching last night and this morning. They launched over 150 missiles into Israel and about 170 drones. The United States and Britain actually helped last night, amen, through aircraft to intercept those drones. And apparently it would seem that uh, there was a maybe one injury in Israel, amen, and though they were attacking military bases, one military base took a small hit, amen, but nothing to keep it from functioning anymore. So Israel has this amazing defense system that nobody can figure out. It's called the Iron Dome. I was studying that yesterday, and I found this, that they have a three-dome system. There's one dome, amen, that can handle low-level missiles, amen, that come in from a certain altitude, and it just, it just knocks all them out. They have another one for cruise missiles that shoot higher, amen, and they have one that can knock that out. It goes higher to defend themselves. That one they call David's Arrow. It's spiritual, church. These are end-time warnings. And then they have one that can even do, amen, missiles from higher. I don't remember the name of that one because, amen, I started praying when I heard about David's arrow. <laughs> <clears throat> I said all that to say this. If this war escalates, now, now here's the greatest impact it's going to have on the United States. Is it is going to corrupt or I, I should say, cause an economic collapse. You think inflation is high now? Gas over $5 a gallon. It'll make you want to go to Texas. $5 a gallon. Amen. Inflation. But, but watch this. Are we going to fund Ukraine? Amen. And Israel? 
and South Korea. Amen. And as these skirmishes start up, guess what? Everybody needs billions and billions and billions of dollars. Amen. We're cranking out weapons as fast as we can. Not necessarily for ourselves. We selling them and giving them away to Ukraine and to Israel and all that. Where do you think all that money's coming from? Huh? Yes. How many filed your taxes? Didn't get no money back this year. I'm funding a war. Yeah. Taxes will go up, inflation's going to go up, everything's going to get more and more expensive. And guess what? This is just the beginning of sorrows. But everybody's going to say, we need peace. And then here comes old slick devil himself, the Antichrist, and he's able to make peace for about three years, if that. And everyone's going to say, this has to be Christ. This has to be the Messiah. He's the only one that can bring world peace. The devil is a liar. I believe the rapture will happen before then, but then that, that says this, how close are we to the rapture? Amen. I've asked the Lord many times, Lord, when you do the rapture, even though we don't know the day, the time, or the hour, could you please do it while we're in church so that nobody will get left behind? Wearing myself out up here. <laughs> Amen. We might be here till noon. No, I'm not the devil. <clears throat> so we see here, that's the first of the seal judgment. Let me fire him off. After that, it says that a red horse will come. Amen. And he'll, he'll, amen, begin to remove that peace and war will happen. Then a black horse will come. Amen. Where there'll be disaster and famine in the world. It says, you talk about inflation, a loaf of bread in those days will cost you a day's wage. Just to get a loaf of bread. After that is going to be what's called the pale green horse. This rider is death. And he'll have the authority to kill a quarter of the population of the whole earth. Which is about 2 billion people today. Amen. After that there will be a great persecution. Amen. Where the Antichrist will come together to wipe out as many Christians as he can. And then... There'll be a great earthquake, amen. And the sun will become like sackcloth, the scripture says. There'll be so much smoke and stuff in the air that it will actually be difficult, amen, to see the sun through all the mess. Star-like objects, maybe meteorites or something, will become crashing down to the earth. Mountains and islands in this earthquake will be shaken and they'll be shifted and moved. And then there'll be lightning and thunder, will be released. After that, we have the seven trumpet judgments. Amen. A third of the earth will be set on fire and burned up and all the green, a third of all the green grass, green living things and green living trees, amen, will be burned up. A third of the sea will be turned to blood. A third of all ships that will be on the waters during that time will be destroyed. This is going to collapse economics, amen. You're not going to be able to get your stuff that you ordered from Amazon that comes through China. Amazon usually comes the next day. What's up? Oh, oh, that ship got burned up on the sea last night. <laughs> amen. A third of the rivers and the fresh waters, amen, will be made bitter. Amen. The water will become poisonous. Amen. A third of the daylight will be blotted out, which means you're only going to have, amen, eight hours of dim daylight during the day. Amen. And then God is going to unleash out of the bottomless pit these demon-like locust creatures that have tails of scorpions that is going to be able to sting everybody. Amen. And, and they're going to feel the pain of that sting for five months and even if they try to kill themselves God won't let them die I don't know about you I ain't gonna be here my God hallelujah and I hope you're not either after that, out of the Euphrates area, amen, 200 million evil spirits will be unleashed, killing one-third of mankind in a certain hour. They'll have the power to exterminate a third of humanity. We already lost two billion earlier. Now a third of what's left over will be taken down 
by these evil spirits where it says burning sulfur and fire come out, amen, of them as they're riding on these demonic horses. And then there'll be lightning and thunder and a great hailstorm. Amen. Oh, yeah, you thought you had problems? You don't have any problems. Amen. Then after that is the seven bold judgments. There'll be malignant sores that break out on everybody who has taken the mark of the beast. Amen. All of the sea and the oceans become blood. Everything in them dies. Amen. All the fresh water, all of it now becomes blood. So when you're thirsty and you need water, you're actually going to be drinking bloody water. The sun becomes so hot that everyone will not be able to find comfort. And it says everybody will be scorched. Everybody's going to be burnt. I say, not with my skin. I don't burn. Oh, you're going to burn on this one. Amen. Everyone is burned by the blast of this great heat. Amen. And what it says, the scripture says, they actually blaspheme God. They curse God for what is going on. Amen. The kingdom of Antichrist will finally be plunged into darkness. Amen. And then all of the armies, the human armies, amen, out of the east will come to attack Israel. And this will be known as the battle of Armageddon where Christ will come down and wipe them out. Amen. With a sword, it says, out of heaven coming out of his mouth. And then there will be a great earthquake. So much so that the islands disappear. The mountains are made flat, and 75-pound hailstones, amen, mixed with blood will come crashing down on the earth. Mm. That's the seven-year tribulation period. That's a whole lot going on in seven years. And God gives this to us to check ourselves. Hallelujah. Church, we cannot miss the rapture. There's no reason why anybody should miss the rapture. Amen. If there's something you got to get right in your life, amen. We're living in a time of grace where the Lord just says, just bring it to me. Come, let's reason together. Just repent of your sins. I shed my blood for you. I shed it for all sin. And then after this is the great white throne judgment. And the great white throne judgment of God is for all those who have not accepted Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, have not repented of their sins, have not been baptized in the name of the Lord, not received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need those things to make your salvation sure according to the word of God. Hallelujah. But if you die without accepting Christ, the next event will be the great white throne judgment. Revelations 20, 11 through 15. I just want to give it to you the way the scripture says. And the New King James says it like this. Then I saw a great white throne in him, capital H, who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. In other words, when they see, amen, him, I believe this is the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the throne. It says they're looking for a place to hide because they know they're not right with God. And John the Revelator said, and I saw the dead, small and great. All the dead came up. Don't matter if they're poor, didn't matter if they're rich, didn't matter what their positions were on earth. Amen. All of that meant nothing. Trust me, you're not going to come before God, amen, and try and show them all, amen, your achievements in life and, amen, and all your titles. If you're not right with God, you're going to be running, trying to run for your life with nowhere to go. My God. They were standing before God, and it says, and books were opened. My, my, my. In other words, if anyone was going to try and make a case before God, amen, the books get opened. Remember when Jesus said to love your enemy? How'd you do on that one? Mm. All the books will be open. All the law, everything that Jesus taught, amen. All the books concerning God, amen, of warnings, of gospel, everything will be open to see how everyone responded to the books of God. But it says, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged according to their works, but the things by the things which were written in the books. There's one major thing that you're going to want written in that book, amen, and that is this. What did you do with Jesus Christ? Uh, amen. They're going to call your name. They ain't going to look it up. Hey, Michael. I doubt if Jesus talks to Michael like that, but hey, Michael, what about this one? How did he handle me? Let's see here. What's his last name again? Hernandez. Uh, I'm hoping we don't have any Hernandezes in here today. <laughs> Hernandez, Hernandez, Hernandez. Oh, here he is. Uh, let's see. He cursed your name 863 times. Amen. He blamed you for things going on in his life 1,858 times. Amen. You gave him, amen, a chance to come to you, amen, over 10,000 times. And every time he rejected it. What is, what is Hernandez going to say? Uh, yeah. And it says they were judged according to their works by the things which are written in the books. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. In other words, it don't matter where you were buried. It don't matter, amen, if you were burned up. It don't matter if they laid you out at sea, amen. It don't matter, amen, if you had your ashes crushed and, and pushed, amen, and scattered through different parts of the world, amen. All of it's going to come up and come before God in the great white throne judgment. And it says, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. Oh, my. We're going to talk about Hades here in a second. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Book of Life, also known as the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus Christ being our Lamb. It is amazing because, amen, Jesus gave us a little bit, amen, of what Hades is like. Hades is the first death. Hades is when we die, amen, if you're not in Christ, amen, you go to this holding tank, if you will, called Hades. Jesus gave us a, a, a story about the rich man and a poor beggar by the name of Lazarus. This is not the Lazarus Jesus raised up after four days. It's a different Lazarus. And, and the rich man could, could see a cross to where Lazarus was, and Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham, being comforted. But this rich man says he was in torment. And, and, and he, asked, he asked Abraham, have Lazarus come over with some cold water on his finger and at least put that on my tongue because I'm burning up in this flame. Abraham said, he can't come over. There's a great gulf between us. There's a great area that no one can pass through. In other words, if you were in Hades, you were in Hades because of how you lived your life. You had good things, but you couldn't even give Lazarus a meal when he was begging at your door. And now Lazarus is comforted and taken care of. That is called Hades. But the scripture we just read says then death in Hades, amen, was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the ultimate death. It's the second death. It's where those who are in Hades will spend eternity. And God, amen, figures all this out, passes out all this judgment, it's not really judgment, amen, what it is, amen, is that everyone will be rewarded according to their deeds. The problem is, if they're evil and you didn't bring Christ into your life, it means you're headed for the lake of fire. My God, the second death. When Jesus referred to, amen, the lake of fire, not Hades, but the lake of fire, he oftentimes referred to it by a place that was in Israel at that time called the Gehenna Valley. And the Gehenna Valley was basically the garbage dump for all of Israel. And it was in this lake, I mean, in this valley, amen, uh, the, the valley of Gehenna, amen, where uh, they would throw all the trash, but they would also throw all the dead animals. But here's what else they would do. 
they would take, take criminals even and throw them in there. They didn't even get a proper burial. And so this is how Jesus referred to it in this teaching in Mark 9, 43 and 48. He says, if your hand offends you, cut it off. Now, what that means is that there's something going on in your life that is, amen, disobedience to God or sin. He's saying, cut it off. But Jesus is giving us, amen, some, some powerful images here, amen, of how important it is to cut off sin and cut off disobedience to God. Because it says, if your hand offend you, cut it off. Don't you know it's better for you to enter into life, everlasting life, maimed, or in other words, without a hand, than having two hands and go to hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Now he's talking about hell, the lake of fire, but he's using the analogy of this valley. And there was so much rubbish and dead flesh inside this garbage valley that it is said that the worm never died. In other words, the maggots never died. The maggots had plenty to eat. And you know what maggots turn into? They turn into flies. And the scripture says that the devil is the prince of flies or Beelzebub. Mm. It says it's the fire that never shall be quenched. It's amazing how you'll talk to people who really don't know scripture and all that, and you talk about hell. They say, yeah, I want to go to hell because that's where all my friends are going. And when we burn up, it's all going to be over anyway. Well, guess what? You don't burn up. Amen. You get a body that can continue, amen, to handle the flame, but you're in pain, you're in torment, and it lasts forever because he says it shall never be quenched. Whew. Jesus went on to say, if your foot offends you, cut it off. Same thing. It's better to go into life with one foot than having two feet cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where the worm dies not, the fire is not quenched. And if your eye offends you, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm died not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus says it three times. It's a wonderful warning of God that he's telling us, do what you have to do to cut off sin and disobedience God from your life because you don't want to go to the lake of fire. So the question comes down to this for us. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? When you repented of your sins, baptized in his name, amen, received the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, amen. Was your name written in the book of life? Hallelujah. Because there is this question, or has your name been blotted out? Wait, 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 Pastor. I don't quite understand it either, but I'm just going to give you the scripture. In Revelation, when Jesus was talking to the churches to say to the messenger of that church, say this to my people. Now, this is right before the rapture. It says in Revelation 3 and 5, he that overcometh, he's saying this to the church, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. Which, which begs us to ask this question, amen, that are you saying there were some in that church who did not repent after they had been saved that could be blotted out? And I'm sure we could have a long theological discussion about that, but I'm going to lay that up for you for God to deal with your heart. But Jesus did say that I'll not blot out his name which lends us to believe that there are some whose name could be blotted out. Jesus is saying this to the church. This isn't to the world. In fact, right before that, here's, here's the warning he gave this church. He said, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. In other words, he's saying to them, look, amen, you, you are still following me, but you have, amen, fallen away and there's very little that are remaining. So he says, look, be watchful. 
Understand what's going on in the world. Understand how the world system affects you. Amen. And strengthen what you have left in me that are ready to die. He says, you're holding on to me, but it's about ready to die off. You're that low in me. Because I have not found your works perfect before God. Which, thank you, Jesus, is a nice way of saying imperfect. He says, therefore, remember how you have received and heard and hold fast. And here it is. And repent. This is the love of Christ. He says, you know the word. You know what it takes to get right with me. So do it. Just repent. If therefore you shall not watch, I'll come to you as a thief. And you won't even know what hour I will come upon you. There's a few names left in Sardis. That was this church. There's a few of you, in other words, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. End time warnings. I'm closing now, but as we see what's going on in the world today, we see what happened last night, and this has been escalating for really thousands of years. But now we're seeing it, amen, amped up like never before in our lifetimes. We see what God is showing us. And as a pastor, who is my responsibility to feed you, to pray for you, and to care for your soul, amen, I don't want to see anybody lost. Amen. Now, these, these are not the messages, amen, that build up a pastor's ego. Like, you know what, pastor? Next time you're upset about something, you don't need to take it out on us. <laughs> no, I'm good. I just came off vacation. Trust me, I'm good. <laughs> this was all God. And uh, I, I received some confirmation about this Wednesday night in our Bible study because the Lord was already dealing with me on this. And so I had this message put together before the events of last night. It just shows you God's amazing timing. Amen. And, and why it's so important, amen, for us to, amen, anyone who comes up here and preaches a message to you that they have sought God. God, what do you want your people to hear? Hallelujah. And so I take that portion of my job very, very very seriously that you receive the word of God from this place. Here's what I say to each and every one of you, and that's why I say those of you who are watching online and, and those of you who have, have received the link to this message, amen, and that is this, that you can make it to heaven from this place. From this place, you can make it to heaven. <clears throat> There are churches you can go to to make you feel good, but they may not get you in heaven. And part of getting to heaven is sometimes we got to preach both sides. You know, God is a God of both sides because he understands humanity, right? Some of you, you're just going to come to God because he loves you and you love love and he makes you feel good and amen and he's your savior and amen and I just love being his son or his daughter. That, that, that's good. Is that how God made your heart and wired you? That's good. But then there's some cats like me who are from the street a little bit. And what brought me to God was he can send me to hell. Oh, no, I need to hook up with him because I don't want to go to hell. A, a place where there is everlasting pain? And I don't even like a little headache? I, I feel a headache coming on, and I'm four Tylenols in. Thank God I don't get headaches. Hallelujah. He knows what we can handle. Amen. But a place that has everlasting torment. I didn't, when I first came to the Lord, I didn't know about the love of God. 
I knew a religious God being raised in the Catholic Church, but I didn't know about the love of God or that I was his son, that I was created in his image. I didn't know all that. When I heard the gospel, I knew this, that he has the power to send me to get. Now, I believed in God, and I believed he had the power. So he has the power to send me to hell. Here was, here's what I asked. What do I have to do? They could have told me anything because I didn't know the word. If they would have told me, well, you got to walk from here all the way to New York in the next six months, I said, see ya. I'm on it. I ain't doing hell. They said, just repent. Okay, what does that mean? You know, big old religious word, repent. What does that mean? It means you turn toward God, give him control of your life, and just follow his teaching, follow his ways. And I was like, well, gee, I don't know if I can do that. I got a case of beer in the, in the trunk right now. He said, he'll give you the power to do that. Okay, well, if he's going to help me, I can do the repent thing. He said, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. I said, well, I was told I was baptized as a baby. I don't remember that, but that's what they tell me. They said, no, you need to be immersed in water. You need, to, you need to take that old Jew and bury that sucker in the grave. And you will come up brand new with the name of Jesus Christ on you. Amen. And it says, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And out of your belly shall come rivers of living water. You're going to speak in a new heavenly language that will come out. You won't understand it, but it is one of the proofs that God is moving in you. I said, I'm in. I can do that. That's all I got to do. Shoot. Yes. And I did that. Hallelujah. And to show you how God will, will just giving a quick testimony here, how God does change your heart in the midst. <clears throat> When we first started receiving the word, amen, Lady G and I, we weren't saved. Amen. So we were living the unsaved life. Yes, Lady G was my partner in sin. <laughs> She's getting real nervous right now because I usually tell stories the way I remember them, which sometimes are a little different how she remembers them. But I remember that my sister and brother-in-law who went to an apostolic church in Otai at the time had invited us to go to a service that night. There was some revival, some big evangelist was coming in. He was going to bring the word, y'all should go. And I didn't even know what evangelist meant, but amen. But I had other plans. Amen. I'm going to take Debbie to the movies. Y'all remember the Vogue Theater in Chula Vista? Oh, I'm a, we're really dating ourselves. Amen. On Third Avenue there, I had plans. I'm going to take her to the movies. We're going to go up the street to the bar. I'm going to help her get a little buzz on. <laughs> then we're going to get busy a little later than that. <laughs> now watch this. God's dealing with my heart already. Right? But I said, I'm going to need some help. Yeah. Right? In the middle of the movie, out of nowhere, I turned to her and I says, you want to go to that church service? And she looked at me and said, if you want to. Do you know where it's at? She said, no, but we could call them. So we ran outside, went to the phone booth. Yeah, we old, I know. We went to the phone booth. <laughs> we called them. And they said, oh, here's the, here's the kicker. Oh, we're not going to make it, but... It starts at so-and-so o'clock. Here's the address. And we went looking for it. Amen. This was before GPS. Amen. Didn't have a map. We just looking for it. And we found it. And we went into this service. Scared. Still questioning myself. What am I doing here? I had other plans tonight. And, and we went in there. We didn't even get to hear the preacher preach because the spirit was so high. I realize it now. I don't, I'm not sure what was going on. Amen. Sisters were spinning like tops going down aisles. Others were laid out. Amen. Amen. It was crazy in there. And I said, I thought I went and started some crazy parties, but this is crazy. 
and the preacher is down the aisle and he's sweating all over everybody and he's doing crazy and screaming and yelling and I don't even know what the message, what he said, amen, but he said, amen. Someone needs to come to this altar. And there I go like a zombie. <laughs> Thinking to myself, I got other plans for tonight. And I remember kneeling down and got a word from, amen, the altar worker, I guess. And he's telling me, God's going to help you with your drug problem. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, I don't do drugs. Now, alcohol, now you would have said that, I probably would have fell out right there. He was off, everything was off, but I had tears running down my face. And I remember just saying, God, help me. And within six months, amen, we came to North Park Apostolic Church, baptized in Jesus' name, amen, <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a lot that goes on in minds of the unbeliever when you are confronted with the word of God. And, and even as believers, we need this to make sure we're right. Amen. And I'm saying a lot of this because, amen, there's people I believe are going to hear this word that may never come to a church. But if we get the word out, they'll hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Jesus went to the cross, paid the price for our sins, shed his blood, covered us with his blood, gave us his righteousness, that we would rise with him in everlasting life. End time warnings. Please stand. Hallelujah. I want to open up this altar at this time. I, I, I should say, let's just everybody come down. Let's just make sure we're all right with God. But if there's someone who wants baptism today, I'm going to ask you to come over here by these steps, and we'll pray for you over there if you want baptism today. Amen. But everybody, let's just come down. Let's just take five minutes. Amen. Make sure we're right with God. Repent of every area of our life. Amen. I want, I want you to come with this kind of urgency. Hallelujah. We don't, no man knows the day or the hour, but if you knew the Lord was going to come in the next 15 minutes for his people, what would your prayer like be right now? Hallelujah. 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 This, this is an act of God's love right here. This is an act of God's love. Hallelujah. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Get as close as you can. Amen. Un in unity and as the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. As the worship goes forth. Amen. Make sure you're right with God. And repent right now. Just return your direction back to God in every area of your life. Hallelujah. some questions in the corners of your mind 
and traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find. Reflections of your past seem to face you every day. But this one thing I do know that Jesus is the way. Believe that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him. You gotta believe. Jesus is the answer for the world. Today. He's got everything you Above need. Him, no oh, 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 yeah. Jesus is the way. And I know you've got some mountains that you think you cannot climb. I know that your skies have been dark and you think the sun won't shine. In case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. And everything he promised, he will do for you. Believe that Jesus, I know he is. Oh. He's got every answer. He's got everything you need. Above him. Oh no. If you believe that, sing it with us. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Don't doubt it. Jesus is the way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by him. He's got joy. He's got love. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for you. For you. Oh, oh no. He'll help you through everything. Oh. Above him, above him, above him, there's no, above him, not mother, not father, not your very best friend, you can trust him with everything you need, you can depend on him for everything you need. Above him there is no one. Jesus is the way. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is the way. Above him there. Anyone else want to make your salvation sure? Want to make sure you baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you're unsure about that, don't, don't be unsure. Amen. Come on up. Amen. Come on up. Hallelujah. We already have one candidate that went for baptism. Hallelujah. This is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word today. Hallelujah. It's a word of your warning, but it's a word of your grace and your mercy, Lord. And it speaks of how much you love us. So make sure we are right with you. Lord, we thank you for salvation. Thank you for going to the cross for us. Thank you for shedding your blood for us. So, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us as the body of Christ, Lord, for our disobedience, our sins, Lord. Forgive each and every one of us, God. We have not represented you right. We've given to selfishness. Lord, forgive us and give us the strength to overcome in every area of our life. Lord, we are one of those that have the form of godliness but deny your power, Lord. We want to operate in your full power, the power of the cross and the power of your resurrection and the power to build your kingdom and grow your kingdom. Oh, God, we want to be that true church that you have called us to be. So, Lord, forgive us. We redirect every part of our lives towards you. And we look for you to come back for us in the clouds, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We give you the glory and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. Amen. We have a, a quick announcement for you. Amen. And then we'll, uh, we'll receive your offering and let you go. Good morning, North Park. We hope that you have enjoyed the service today and that your soul has been filled and your spirit has been lifted. Here are your announcements for the week. Bridging the Gap Women's Ministry presents A Mother's Love, A Great Legacy. Meet us on Saturday, May 4th at 10 a.m. All ladies ages 13 and up are welcome. Please sign up at the Connect table today at the service. Thank you. Well, those are your announcements for the week. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Remember to love God, love others, serve others, and share the gospel. We will also be that day so there's a sign up sheet on the connect table as well men we need you to serve on that day thank you amen 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 you appreciate the word today my 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 still in awe how God comes down and because he loves us speaks to our spirits Every time, every Sunday, because he loves us, he knows what we need. My, my, my. Awesome God we serve. Awesome God we serve. My Lord. Talked to us last week about praying, seek his face. This is the time we need to seek his face. Now we hear what we've heard today. My God. End time. This is the time we need to fine-tune ourselves. Fine-tune ourselves. Amen. Fine-tune ourselves to what's going on. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Amen. Awesome word. Awesome word. We need to look up for our, our redemption does draw nigh. My, our, my, my, my. Also, as a, a quick way, another quick announcement, if you want more words, uh, interested in hearing more word, uh, we do have service tonight at 6 p.m. Amen. We do have every service every Sunday night. Amen. Amen. 6 p.m. Amen. Evangelist Tucker is going to be speaking tonight 6 p.m. We do have some great music. Uh, we have some choirs that come in. Oh, we have baptism. Okay, let's pause for a moment. Lord, we pray right now, and we thank you for the service you've given to us today. We thank you for the word that you delivered to your people, O great God of heaven. We pray for this offering right now as it's about to be received, O God. Bless it for your kingdom's sake, O God. We thank you once again. Bless your people, O God, right now. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now in the hands of the usher. We love you today. God bless you all.